if you're traveling in the North Country Fair. My name is Lorraine Lopez. I'm an English professor at Vanderbilt University and a writer. The preeminent critic and scholar of Latino, Latina literature, the late Juan Bruce Novoa, once identified me as a second generation writer in an essay on my work. He wrote that I am, quote, one of the new writers privileged to study craft with a Latina mentor of established reputation. In this case, Judith Ortiz Kofer, end quote. I feel that privilege keenly, as no one has given me more guidance, more support, and more practical help in my writing life than Judith. Aware of the singularity and significance of our relationship, an established Latina writer mentoring an emerging one, Judith took her role as mentor seriously. She gave so freely of her time, her insights, her wisdom, that I often wondered how I could ever reciprocate. When I was a graduate student, a single mother providing for two teenagers on a teaching assistant stipend, Judith would often buy me lunch or dinner and steer me toward opportunities to earn a little extra, helping me make ends meet. She would also give me her clothes beautiful flowing skirts and smart looking blazers that I treasure to this day. And she'd buy me the earrings she claimed Latina writers should wear. <laughs> I, I'm wearing the triangled, uh, tri-amber danglers she gave me. <clears throat> Generosity was one of Judith's defining traits. Another is grace. She not only showed me how to deal with challenging situations and difficult people with tact and poise, she facilitated the graceful transition of our relationship into a lasting and dynamic friendship. In doing this, Judith showed how to develop meaningful and close connections with those I teach and mentor. Beyond the mentoring, the skirts and blazers, the dangling earrings, Judith gave me faith in myself and in my writing. Through example, she showed me dedication to craft and an impeccable work ethic. She taught me to honor commitments promptly and completely. Whenever I requested letters of, rec uh, of endorsement from my professors for applications, Judith was always the first to allay my anxiety by submitting her recommendation well before deadline. I used to joke with my husband, my husband now, you know, uh, when I'd ask for letters, I'd say, guess who wrote the first one? And he'd say, Judith, and it always was Judith. She was aware. You see, she was aware of that anxiety, mindful of the feelings of others, and responsive to the emotional textures of our lives. She would no more make me wait and worry than she would deliberately jab me with a pin. Her knowledge and wisdom, her intellectual curiosity matched her emotional intelligence. She had keen interest in science and nature, a fascination with the world that was infectious. Of course, no one has just one way of being. And Judith, I believe, was more complex, more nuanced than most of us. She was many things to many people, proud and loving wife, mother, and grandmother, a sharp and witty colleague, a brilliantly gifted writer, an inspired and inspiring teacher, and a generous and caring friend. To Judith's family, who were privileged with intimate knowledge of this amazing woman, let me tell you how loving she was to me. She brokered and shared her hard-won success to help me succeed. As I've said, no one has done more for my writing life than Judith. In our every interaction, she showed how much she cared for me, and I hope she had some idea of the depth of my gratitude to her. She was far more than a mentor, more than a friend. Judith blazed and continues to blaze like a torch, illuminating for me the path that she has struggled to break on her own, her voice warm and urgent in my ear. You can do this. I know you can. Um, one of Judith's favorite poems is also one of my favorite poems. She read it here many years ago at um, an event at UGA, and she was she was very happy, she was very proud to have been asked to do that. So I want to close with her words. 
Uh, this poem is To Understand Al Asur. We dream in the language we all understand, in the tongue that preceded alphabet and word. Each time we claim beauty from the world, we approximate its secret grammar, its silent syntax, drawn nearer to the Rosetta Stone for dismantling Babel. If I say El Azul, you may not see the color of mi cielo, mi mar. Look once upon my sky, my sea, and you will know precisely what El Azul means to me. Begin with this, the cool kiss of a September morning in Georgia, the bell-shaped currents of air changing in the sky, the sad ghosts of smoke clinging to a cleared field, and the way days will taste different in your mouth each week of the season. Sábado, Saturday, is strawberry. Martes, Tuesday, is bitter chocolate to me. Do you know what I mean? Still everything we dream circles back. Imagine the bird that returns home every night with news of a miraculous world just beyond your private horizon. To understand its message, first you must decipher its dialect of distance, its idiom of dance, look for clues in its arching descent, in the way it resists gravity. Above all, you have to learn why it aims each day toward the boundless Azul. Thank you.